Welcome to the Reduce Severus Podcast, Episode 61, CISSP Exam Questions, Domain 1. Welcome to the Reduce Cyberus Podcast, where we provide you the training and tools you need to pass the CISSP exam while enhancing your cybersecurity career. Hi, my name is Sean Gerber, and I'm your host for this action-packed, informative podcast. Join me each week as I provide the information you need to grow your cybersecurity knowledge so that you're better prepared to pass the CISSP exam. All right, let's get going. Hey, all Sean Gerber again with Reduce Cyber Risk and SeanGerber.com. Hope everybody's doing wonderful this beautiful day and hope you're having a great time studying for your CISSP exam. Yeah, I say that you're probably just going to shut up. I'm tired of studying for this thing. Uh, Yeah, it's it's challenging. There's no question about it, but you got to do it, especially if you want to make the big money. Uh, It's good money. I don't know if it's big money, but it's good money. Uh, So you need to, to get your path down the cybersecurity space and then get into the cybersecurity world, you need to get it done. So let's just do it, right? All right, so let's roll into some exam questions for domain one. All right, question number one. Which of the following would generally not be considered an asset in risk analysis? Okay, these are for Brainscape. I also want to put a plug out for Brainscape. You can go to Brainscape and check out their flashcards and just you can study those to your heart's content. There's a lot of good stuff out there for that. All right, so the question again, which of the following would generally not be considered an asset in risk analysis? A, a development process. B, IT infrastructure. C, a proprietary system resource. Or D, users per personal files. Okay, so again, which of the following would generally not, underline not, we've talked about before, don't buy the not, don't don't graze past that, be considered an asset in risk analysis? And the answer is D, users' personal files, okay? Personal files are typically not considered assets of an organization because you can take them with you unless you create personal files for the company, I guess. I don't know, but I think that would not really typically be considered an asset of the company. But you do need to understand those when you do a risk analysis because you don't want those breached, especially if you're dealing with GDPR and other privacy aspects. You want to make sure that uh, those are well protected. Question two, you've been you've performed a basic quantitative quantitative risk analysis on a very specific threat or vulnerability or risk relation. You select a possible countermeasure. And when performing the calculations again, which of the following factors will change? A, exposure factor. B, single loss expectancy or SLE. You'll see that Sierra Lima X-ray or not X-ray, geez, echo, SLE. Uh, C is asset value or the annual rate of occurrence. Okay, so you're doing a basic quantitative risk analysis on a specific risk, vulnerability, or risk relation. You select a possible countermeasure, but when performing the calculations again after the countermeasure you selected, which of the following factors will change? Exposure, single loss expectancy, asset value, or annualized rate of occurrence. It is D, annualized rate of occurrence. A countermeasure will affect it. So as it affects it, you're going to have, it will affect the the rate of occurrence that you could expect to see. So therefore, that would be the one that would quit, that would change. All right, question three. What ensures that the subject of an activity or event cannot deny that the event occurred? A, the CIA triad, triangle, triune. B, abstraction. D, non-repudiation. Or C, C, non-repudiation. D, Hash totals, which ensures the subject of the activity or event cannot deny that the event occurred. That would be C, non-repudiation. It ensures that the subject of the activity of the event cannot deny that the event occurred. That's what it is. All right, that was all I have today for the exam questions. Check me out at SeanGerber.com. You can get access to my CISSP questions along with all of the other data that I have out there. You get access to my CISSP training. It's available for you to purchase And by doing that, you also get access to me. And I'd be happy to help you in any possible way I can to pass the CISSP exam and move on with your cybersecurity professional career. All right, have a wonderful day, and we'll catch you on the flip side. See ya. Thanks so much for joining me today on my podcast. If you like what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes. I would greatly appreciate the feedback. 
Also, check out my CISSP videos that you can find out on YouTube. Just search for Sean, S-H-O-N, Gerber, like the baby food, toilet, or whatever you choose. And then you will find a plethora of content to help you pass the CISSP exam the first time. Lastly, head over to SeanGerber.com and look at the cornucopia of free CISSP materials available to all my email subscribers. Thanks again for listening. See ya.